Hi everyone, my name is Dan. Uh, here to talk to you about VJS render functions and uh, functional components. Just to give you guys a little bit of an overview of what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Then I'm going to touch on imperative versus declarative rendering, which Talv kind of touched on earlier. Um, and most of this is just going to be showing you code examples, uh, real things that I've actually had to deal with. Uh, and then if anyone has any questions, we can go into that. So first of all, who am I? My name is Dan Epperhamian. Um, I'm a New York City-based software engineer. Been here for about nine years now. Um, I'm currently working at MongoDB on their Node.js driver, uh, which unfortunately means I'm doing entirely server-side Node.js. Don't get to do any fun web stuff at work anymore. Though of course, that also means I don't have to deal with Babel anymore, which is wonderful. Um, but uh, in my spare time, I do like to use Vue. It's currently my uh, favorite framework. Um, absolutely wonderful. I use it for a few freelancing projects. Um, and yeah, I have about five years of uh, web development experience. It's kind of thrown into this. Um, I graduated doing like VHDL and C. And so doing uh, web stuff was a big change, but I absolutely love it. So now I'm going to go over a little bit the differences between imperative rendering and declarative rendering. Um, so first off, imperative rendering uh, is basically describing how you want to render your view. So it, like an example I get, like to use for imperative programming is if you want to describe adding four numbers together, you would say add A to B, then add that result to C, then add that result to D. So imperative rendering is step by step going through different instructions to eventually construct the end DOM that you want. Some examples that we could think of, jQuery as we just saw, very imperative. Backbone JS without Marionette, also very imperative. React without using JSX, that's also very imperative instructions step by step. It has the benefit of giving you all of JavaScript at your disposal. You're not limited by anything other than what JavaScript can do. So it's really powerful in that way, but it's pretty hard to read. Um, this example over here, I mean, you probably can't read that anyway because it's really small text. Um, but it's basically a render function for, render, for rendering a list in jQuery. Um, looking at it from far away, I can't tell what that's supposed to be. It's, you know, like create a div, then I'm appending a div if there's a title, then I'm making an unordered list, and then I have to iterate over all the items, add these list items, append those to the unordered list, append that to the div, and then return it. It's, you know, when you read it, you understand what it is, but from a quick glance, it's just it's JavaScript. You don't want to look at that. Um, it's kind of annoying. In contrast, we have declarative rendering, which describes what you want to render instead of how to render it. This is typically done via templating or JSX. Typical examples, Marionette.js brought in item views to Backbone. AngularJS and Angular, those are all using templates for declarative rendering. React with JSX is kind of declarative, um, but it still gives you some imperative stuff in there. Uh, Vue also, as we typically consume it, is declarative. Like you can look at this template over here. This is a Vue template for what I was showing you before. It's a lot easier to see what's going on there. You've got just a div that's conditioned. There's a title, and then you have a list for all the items in items, which just displays item.value. Really easy. So it's definitely easier to read. That's a wonderful pro. But the con to declarative rendering is that you're limited by whatever template language or like framework you're using in order to declaratively you know, list out what you want to do. Um, so it can be a little constricting. Now, in the case of Vue, we have the best of both worlds. Because what Vue will basically do is Vue encourages you to be declarative. It takes in a template that you write using the template syntax I showed before. And then the Vue compiler will compile that down to an imperative function that runs in JavaScript. However, should you want to, you can just write that render function yourself. You don't have to use the templating engine. Now, I'm going to say this up front. 90, 95% of the time, probably even more, just use a template. It's going to be fine. Like most cases that you're dealing with, everyday cases, those involve, you just need a template and that's it. However, there are some cases where you're going to want to write a render function instead of using a template. There's no hard and fast rule for this. Like I can't tell you as soon as you see this, you're going to want to switch over to using a render function. Don't bother with the template anymore. 
So rather than like come up with like a really strict set of rules for you guys to follow, I instead wanted to show you an example that I came across in my life. So my example is I was dealing with a component that had multiple options that were all mutually exclusive from each other and also all affected the DOM hierarchy. What do I mean by that? Well, now it's time to go to my example. What it basically has is it has this little uh, text bit over here. And if I fill that in, it just says whatever I write in here. Right? But then I also have three additional options up here. I have a link, a badge, and an alert. This is all using Vue Bootstrap, by the way. And it's using you know, the Vue CLI generated project. Very easy to use. Um, so if I start adding in a link over here, and you can see my state up here. I'm just printing that out for you. If I add in google.com, right, that makes this into a link. And if I say I want a badge that says new, that adds a badge over here. And if I toggle this alert button, that's going to turn the alert on and off. So this looks really nice, really simple. It's a great interface for decorating whatever I'm passing through with the text over here. But like, the problem is all of these things, the link, the badge, and the alert, they're all mutually exclusive. If I delete the badge, it goes away. And that makes for a very complicated template. I'm going to show you guys the template for this right now. OK? Template is over here. Right? This template is disgusting. I hate it. It's impossible to like, figure out what's going on here. Because the thing is, for every item, I have to conditionally, if the variable is there, use the tag for that component. Otherwise, use a div. And then, it, so for example, with the alert, if the alert is there, I have the alert wrapping everything. Otherwise, I use a div. I then underneath it have the bootstrap link wrapping everything if it's there. Otherwise, just use a span. And then over here, I have the slot. I'm duplicating B badge four times. I'm duplicating B link two times. This code is very not dry. It's very prone to mistakes. If I try and update something over here and I forget to update it here, that's going to be a problem for me. It's, it's not great. This is, the, this is the area where templating falls apart. It's a like, small edge case, but it does exist. So to contrast with that, I instead wrote this using a view render function. So over here, you'll notice this is a render function.view file. I don't have any template up here. Instead, I'm just importing alert, badge, and link from bootstrap view. And then I'm exporting my component. Typical thing here, name, props, that's you know, all regular stuff. But then I have this render function here that takes in a create element uh, parameter. That create element parameter is a function that takes in three arguments. The first one is what kind of element you want to create. That can either be a string saying a tag, like span. Or if you have a component, like I imported above, it will render that view component as another element. The second argument that it takes in are optional options. So you can see for link, I have to pass in the props over here. Um, so that's you know, where you would pass in props. Um, if you go down here, you can see the, for the alert, I pass in attributes for show. So that's how you typically pass that stuff in. And then the last argument is an array of the children that this element has. So you don't actually have to use slots here. You can just use children. Very key point I want to emphasize, it has to be an array. I spent like more time than I would like to admit trying to figure out why this wasn't working. And then I realized that I had to wrap it in an array. So yeah, just letting you know, if you want to use create element, you know, you got to use it in an array for the third argument. So if you look at this code, this code is Honestly, it's imperative. So it's not as great as a clean template, but it's a lot easier to follow what's going on. I make an element, right? And then I, if there's a link, I wrap that element in a link. If there's a badge, I create a new div and append the badge. And if there's an alert, I wrap it in the alert. And then I return a container div that contains my element, right? So it's a lot cleaner as far as a dry perspective. If I'm going to make a change to anything, I only have to change it once here, which reduces the likelihood of errors. Still, it's not great um, because, like I said, it's a little hard to read. These create element functions, not great. So now we're going to do it with JSX. JSX, as you all likely know, is the uh, 
meta language on top of React that compiles down to effectively function calls in JavaScript, and it lets you write HTML-like syntax within your JavaScript. Um, so by, and I include links to this in the end of the presentation, um, by adding an extension to uh, Babel, an extension to ESLint, you can use JSX in your render functions for your view components. So this is pretty much the same as the render function that I showed you before, except now it's using JSX. So it just says, let the element be the span. There's a link. I wrap it with a link. I don't even have to do that props and attribute stuff anymore. I just get to stick it in here. It's nice. If there's a badge, I append the badge. If there's an alert, then I wrap it in an alert. And then I return a big div containing the element. It's nice. It's relatively easy to read. Still not as nice as a pure template, but it's pretty good, right? So something else you might notice from this is that there isn't really any state to this component here. It just takes in options and everything is done based on the slots and the options. So Vue has support for things called functional components. And functional components are components that don't really contain any state. The difference between the previous example and this one is I added this field, functional true, and now my render function over here takes in both h, which is that create element function, and then context, which is basically a big object that contains all your props and slots and things like that. So there's no state actually stored inside of this component. And so from over here, you can see like now instead of pulling in options from this, I'm pulling in context.props.options, pulling in context.children instead of pulling in the slots from this.slots, and everything else is the same. Uh, this is not going to make your code look nicer, but it will actually give you a significant performance improvement because now you don't have any internal view stuff watching the state of your component. It just renders it, right? So we've almost gone all the way for what I want to show you about uh, render functions and functional components. But I want to show you just the full power of what you can do with this kind of stuff. Because once you start writing your own render functions, you can do some uh, pretty awesome stuff. So if I switch back to this website here, you'll see that I have tabs for all of the different examples. They're all exactly the same, but I just wanted to be able to render them when I was testing them out. And so they all do the same thing, and there are all these tabs. And if you were to write this out as a template, you'd have to do B tabs, B tab, in, out, B tab, in, out, and it'd be very repetitive. But the problem is these are each different components on the inside. So what I then did was I turned the entire app into a Render function. And so this is my render function for the app. Uh, you know, you got some computer stuff over here. Uh, I've got data that just returns the name of the tab with the constructor for that uh, component. And then in here, I'm just doing my nice JSX in here. Uh, you know, those inputs from up above, I'm rendering them, doing a binding here. This is one downside. Uh, there is no direct analog to V model, so you kind of have to do this by hand. But other than that, you know, pretty good. I'm just calling lodash.map here to map each of the tags to a tab in line in here in the JSX. And it works and it's nice and relatively, relatively easy to read what's going on. And, you know, pretty awesome. Not a lot of duplicated code. So, uh, yeah, that's it as far as uh, what I was going to show you today with uh, render functions, functional components. There are some nitty gritty things that you can get into, but uh, that's pretty much it. So you can find all of the documentation, all, all of the presentation, and you can find all the code for this example on my GitHub. Um, I included the link to the documentation for Vue.js render functions, as well as how to add JSX support both for Babel and for ESLint uh, on here. So the question was, what are some of the advantages of using the template over the JSX? Um, I would say that it's a little easier to, uh, I would say, I would still say that a template is easier to read than JSX. Um, anything that you're going to do with a, it's also you get a lot of the checking on a template that you wouldn't get in JSX. Since it's a more rigid language, certain mistakes will more easily show up in IntelliSense um, and in your editors, and it'll be a lot easier to debug. Um, yeah, I, I still like to, 
I still like to use templates. It's also nice to be able to separate out into a separate template file or into a separate template block, the full template of your code and keep that separate from your logic. So I feel like, you know, you could argue, I mean, if you're a really big fan of JSX, like then yeah, by all means just use JSX in render functions. But I still think that, you know, templates are a little neater. All right, thank you.